For those of you who think the USC football program is down, you may want to check out the underclassmen going to the NFL draft. It's an impressive list, not just the underclassmen, but really uh, the entire list of uh, draft eligible players for USC. And we're not talking about guys that are reaching for the NFL. We will hear their names called uh, that first week of May in New York. Mark Rogers TV looking at those impact players leaving college football. More importantly for you college football fans, who are these guys that are going to replace them? Is there an heir apparent or on the other hand are we talking about a huge battle for that particular position throughout the spring uh, practices and going into August? Evan Budrovich uh, joins us from uh, Conquest Chronicles. It's the SB Nation uh, USC platform and Evan we thank you much, so much for joining us. Yeah, much appreciated, Mark. Anytime. So let's look at the USC offense. Uh, first of all, of course, the name that stands out to everyone. You don't have to be a huge college football <laughs> fan. It's Marquise Lee. Of course, he had the huge, enormous 2012 season with Matt Barkley at quarterback and Robert Woods on the other side getting some attention as well. The numbers way down last season, but of course, the talent is still exceptional. So your thoughts on the career of Marquise Lee, uh, and more so spinning this into uh, spring football. Who are those guys that are going to be battling for that position? Uh, no, absolutely. And it's kind of funny you mentioned the injuries and the off production last year. He still finished his USC career with the most receptions all time from a USC receiver. So even in three years, you can even argue two and a half injured years, still putting up massive numbers in his career. And I think Marquis Lee, just the final thought on him, an explosive playmaker, who was not even recruited heavily by the Trojans at first. He was like a package deal with Robert Woods, who, as we all know, is doing well with Buffalo. But he kind of came into the fold as a safety mix, and he had a great career for USC. But in terms of guys that are now competing for that spot, and I think the next guy who played with him was Nelson Aguilar. He's that guy who now has to uh, – he was a Florida product. He's now in his junior season. Going to have to really step up and develop because outside of Nelson, there are weapons, but they are by no means the likes of the Robert Woods, the Steve Smiths, the – Marquise Lee's, Dwayne Jarrett's over the years that the Trojans have been spoiled with. Uh, just some names to kind of keep in mind. There's this guy, Darius Rogers. He's a, a true sophomore from, from Carson, California. He's about an hour down the road from SC. Uh, six foot four receiver, so he's a physical guy. He can get up and, and make big catches vertically. There's a couple of slot guys that they're looking at as well, and it kind of starts in the recruiting class. Um, to be honest, they're not going to be big names. Uh, you look at guys like even the tight ends, Telfair might have to step up and make some big plays offensively. You, you know, there's a couple receivers. Um, there's a walk-on guy named Robbie Colons who could contribute. And, and I kid you not, that's what the way the numbers are looking. Uh, I think the guy to watch out for, though, is Adore Jackson, who comes in as a, as a safety and cornerback, but can also play some receiver. He's going to be a weapon. Juju Smith as well out of Long Beach Poly. So, you know, not the big, you know, not the guys who have been immediate contributors over the years but have some talent and can really step up and make big plays. And no question, when you mentioned Smith and Jackson for fringe recruiting people like me that aren't uh, uh, deep into it, uh, we even recognize those names as top talent uh, recruited to USC this past season. Uh, at tight end, Xavier Grimble chipped in with uh, 25 receptions, 271 yards, and two touchdowns. Uh, his contribution looking back uh, last season and, and before that, uh, and again, more importantly, uh, the tight end position uh, this spring and beyond? Well, I, I think luckily in this spring, and you're going to see it more throughout the fall as well, uh, Coach Sarkeesian is a master at utilizing tight ends. He used them back when, I mean, you can't believe it, but Matt Leinert won the championship in, in 05. He was a big part of that offense group as the coordinator then. He comes back to SC now in 2014. He utilized Austin Safarian Jenkins, who was a great tight end at Washington last year. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, tell fairs to that level, but just the fact that you put him in two tight end sets, you let these guys operate, I think he's going to have a big year just because he's one, that, the only option with, with Grimble leaving. And, and then secondly, he's just going to get the ball more. There's going to be more progressions and reads in his direction. And I think the tight end position is one that's going to have a little bit more of production this year. I mean, you mentioned Grimble with the, the, the 25 catches. Uh, by no means in a 14-game season is that really breaking out and having a big performance. So you'd have to imagine, you know, just with Sarkeesian coming along, and then more opportunities for the guys like Telfair and then this guy Bryce Dixon, who's a, a big tight end coming out of uh, out of Nevada, going to give us or out of California, pardon me, going to give USC some options to compete and then get more receptions this year. 
Silas Red, of course, uh, starring at Penn State, a thousand yard rusher there, had a productive first season at uh, USC, of course, leaving Happy Valley after the scandal. But this past season, uh, not necessarily um, a stellar way for Silas Red to finish up his career in college to to get his attention uh, in the NFL. Six games, 376 yards rushing, uh, decent yards per carry average, just the one touchdown rushing, of course. He was very much nicked up. Uh, Silas Red's contribution uh, in your perspective, and then, again, looking ahead to the running back uh, battle. Yeah, no, you definitely nailed it on the head with that first year. He carried the load offensively, kind of became that go-to back on a team that just did not run the ball as well as they wanted to because of falling behind and offensive line injuries. Uh, at the start of last season, Red was productive in those first two, three games coming off the injury. The problem was just there were so many running backs producing. And once Red got injured, about I think there was that second or third game, he did not play for about four games there where guys like Buck Allen stepped up, guys like Justin Davis made big plays, and then it almost becomes you just fall behind in the ranking. And it wasn't that Silas didn't have a productive career. He just got injured at the wrong time. Right when he decided to come back to school, he got injured. And then you're in that awkward position of, well, you can't get drafted now because you declared for the fourth year. But I think overall, you know, Silas was a productive player when he was here. He just couldn't get healthy enough to be a full-time 1,000-yard back for the Trojans. Now, as typically the case, uh, when I review these teams and talk to the uh, the people that really know, yeah, the name guys that we know as fringe people that uh, watch a handful of games per season are the guys that handle the football, but sometimes the better players are along the uh, offensive and defensive lines, and specifically offensive line here with Marcus Martin, who played center last season, a couple years at guard, a first-team All-Pac-12 performer. I'm sure he will be missed. There's no question about that when you uh, rate first team in the Pac-12. Uh, the offensive line situation, maybe not just necessarily Martin's spot, but the way the offensive line shapes up going into spring football. Sure, yeah. Martin was an all-Pac-12 performer. He's leaving, obviously. And it's kind of funny because we talk about the recruits. Uh, there's another recruit coming right in who they actually expect to compete for the starting job. His name is Vian Telemaivo. Uh, he's a local product of Los Angeles. He's one of those guys where they expect him – because he's about just over six foot two, big 300 pound plus lineman to kind of come in there and compete for the job. Uh, there's also a couple of guys, Khalil Rogers, who played a little bit of guard. They want him to slide down. Even the left guard who started there, Max Turek, they think maybe he could play center. So it is going to be a center by committee to start off spring football. And when it comes down to it, it's just that camaraderie with, with Kessler, obviously, or Max Brown, whoever competes for that job and wins it. But it's not going to be a foregone conclusion of who's going to play center. And it may be one of those things where, as of right now, it looks like it's just going to be a rotating barn door until somebody grabs this position. Because you need, obviously, someone who's experienced uh, to run that in very important spot. Evan, for those of us who can't get enough, even during March when there's little to talk about, in a sense, for the fringe college football fan, but for the real serious ones that like to look at depth charts and stats and who's going to be the next guy up, that sort of thing, you're in the midst of a series. Can you talk a little bit about... Uh, uh, what you're working on right now. Sure. I'm just trying to go through position by position and, and lay it out for folks. You know, who's coming back, who can, who's going to expect to contribute, and who's kind of like a breakout player. And, and right now, just one position that kind of caught my eye in terms of the offensive end was that tight end spot we mentioned. Uh, guys like Bryce Dixon coming into the fold. Uh, you have a Telfair who's going to be a big player. And it's just one of those things where spring football, as Sarkeesian keeps saying, it's compete, 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 kind of going back to that Pete Carroll mantra where Everyone gets an opportunity because there really are no foregone positions. You know, maybe you could argue that quarterback is Cody Kessler's right now, but even that, Max Brown could come in and win that spot. So there's not a lot of positions where there's guaranteed starters, which means there's going to be a lot of room for improvement for these guys over the next few weeks. All right. Evan Budrovich, uh, Budrovich. Man, I botched that up every time, don't I? Uh, right in for Conquest Chronicles on the SB Nation platform. Evan, we appreciate your time. Thanks so much for joining us. We're going to come back. We're going to talk some USC defense, and the losses are huge on that side of the football. Evan, thanks so much for joining us, and, of course, we're going to have you right back. Thanks, Mark.